I wanted to make a quick video to describe how number 12 works on the recursion unit packet number 12. We did not get a chance to talk about this one in class, and I think it is definitely a tricky scenario to investigate where we have two recursive calls inside of the recursive method. Now remember, some of the things we talked about were that whenever there is a recursive call, and for example, we see a recursive call here and here, that as soon as the compiler, or as, as soon as that call is encountered, everything below it is put on hold. And so as the code is going through, it encounters that first call of do something. It does not execute the code lines below it. Instead, it stops and it calls another do something and another do something. And all of those calls keep stacking up until it has reached the base case where it stops. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through what happens when we call do something 3. So if we take a look at this, and I'm just going to abbreviate that as D3. So I'm going to call D3, and when I go into the top of my method, since D is greater than 0, I continue. And the next thing that I do is I call do something of 2. So I call do something 2. I do not execute any of those lines of code below. I kick back up to the top of the method, and I call do something 1. I continue this process and call do something 0. As soon as I call do something zero, that right here meets the condition to not continue the recursive call. So now, I inside my do something method, I am down here. I just call do something zero. Do something zero, nothing happened. So now, I come back up here and I print n. So I go back up here to d1, and for do something one, my n value is one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print a 1. And now I'm going to call do something of n minus 1. So now I call do something of 0. And at this point I encounter that exit clause again. And once I encounter this exit scenario, I now leave do something 0. And now I have finished all of the instructions associated with do something 1. So now I kick back up to do something 2. And when I get into do something 2, the first thing that I'm supposed to do is finish the lines of code that were waiting. And the lines of code that were waiting were to print n. So I print a 2, because right now I am at do something 2. And after I printed that, now I have to call do something 1. So now I call do something 1. And inside do something 1, I call do something 0, which nothing happens. So I kick back up to do something 1. And that's where I print a 1. Now, I'm right here. I come down, and I go to do something 0. Again, nothing happens, because nothing happens when my n value is 0. So I kick all the way back up here to do something 2. And do something 2 is now done. So now that I have finished do something 2, I kick back up to what called it. And what called it, d3, now has to print n. So now I print a 3. And then from here, I now call a do something 2. And then this entire pattern continues. So you'll notice all of these methods calls for do something 2 resulted in a 1, 2, 1. So if I were to continue this pattern on down here, I would print another 1, 2, 1. And that's why our correct answer for this problem is C. So I would encourage you to go through and trace out this code. And again, keep on going through like you're the computer. Every time you encounter that recursive call, you have to keep on going until you reach that condition that allows you to leave that recursive loop. And then you slowly start backing your way up the chain. This problem is uniquely hard because there are two recursive calls inside the method. So you have to keep track that every recursive call has to go down two branches.